On seeing this memo, a well-respected accountant, Esperantist, who is familiar with the um, Esperanto movement in Britain and abroad, and who had worked at the Universal Esperanto Association and their accounts, John Rapley wrote, On Esperanto House, we agree 100% with the comment by Will Green. I think that EIB has been conned. I would call it a scandal, for which it appears that culpability lies with Terry Tatton. That's the college um, head, principal, whom I have greatly admired for a long time. But who else could have worked out such an arrangement, in which EAB pays for everything and in the end receives only one little office and some ephemeral rights depending on the goodwill of the college? That one is my translation. In 2005, I went onto the management committee of Esperanto Association of Britain. I had previously, in 2003, um, had a part-time job as information officer when I was finding things weren't as they appeared. And from 2001 to 2003 I had been editing EAB Net News, which is on the internet and um, reveals from time to time stories about the building of Esperanto House and other things in connection with the association, which I believed at the time that was what was being fed to me and I wrote them up. And a lot of that seems to have been bluff. In 2005, a dispute arose regarding the paintwork of Esperanto House, which Dr. Tatton attributed in the October meeting to shoddy workmanship when the house was built. He proposed a strongly worded letter to the new principal, Jill Ward, yet Dr. Tatton had himself been both the college principal and the key player in EAB at that time. I voted against on the grounds that Dr. Tatton would himself have something to explain. After that, after that meeting I checked up in the minutes to find out who had actually built Esperanto House, who had hired the builders, because as I think everyone would have done, it was presumed that the builders would have been hired by the college or by the council of Stoke on Trent. And certainly that was the impression we received. I was surprised to find, that, according to the minutes, it was actually EAB who hired the builders. That would be the most unusual operation for an outside association to build a house on the college property and then pay leasehold. So if that was an extension, if that was a refurbishment of an existing house in theory, that would imply that if the existing house belonged to, to the college, the new house would belong to the college, and I believe that that is the case. When in the February meeting the issue arose, I asked to whom were the builders contracted? And Dr. Tatton said, Stoke. I said, who? And he said, Stoke on Trent City Council. It was then the treasurer who admitted EAB. And Dr. Tatton went on to say that the responsibility for the house, for the building and the maintenance was jointly that of the college and the association. But the point was that if EAB had built that house, paid for it, contracted the builders, and the house was the domain of the college, of which Dr. Tatton was principal, then there needs to be an explanation. There also needs to be an explanation why Dr. Tatton was proposing in the previous meeting that we should send a strongly worded letter to the principal complaining of the shoddy workmanship when the house was built. One possibility that I was forced to look at was the possibility of asset stripping. Since they'd sold a house in London for a million pounds, 
approximately. There's an inconsistent story on the valuation of that house between the what's in the minutes and what their solicitor, their legal advisor, was telling me. And there's an inconsistent story on the financial crisis. And Will Green had resigned in 1995 saying, complaining privately of concealment. I think there should be an inquiry in the local authorities on what on earth has been going on, whether asset stripping could be a motive behind this or whether it could be part of the motive. But certainly the friends of Wedgwood Memorial College who put out a circular suggesting the motive for wanting to sell the property would not be that it's making a loss because Stoke and Trent Council was not subsidising it. In fact, it made a net income or a net income was, uh, was foreseen. They suggest that the motive would be to sell the property. It looks as if the British Esperantists might indeed have been conned.